Welcome to Toffee TV. It is January, which means one thing. We can speculate about players that we are never going to buy, Baz. But that's okay, because well, you never know. The world speculating about them, so why should People we? make livings off it and say, here we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, what does he do away from like the summer in January? He writes and has his own podcast does and he stuff. Does? I think he does. Yeah. Okay. He's a good lad. He hibernates. Is he a good lad? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Seems like one. Um, we nice are fella. talking about the transfers. We are. Possible transfers. Lots of rumours. Lots of speculation. Let's try and break some down and get to the the nitty gritty of them. Of oh, whether okay. they're real, they're not real. Whether we want them, whether we, do, whether we don't want them. Whether we need them. Uh, let's start with Deli Alley. Being quite a bit of... Just chat in the background mm. about Deli Ali leaving Spurs yep. as a whole. Paris Saint Germain were rumoured in the summer to be looking at him. Now that seems to be well. Now with that, there's Pochettino there. That could be that could be something that actually does happen. But mm. he has been linked with Everton. Um, do you, was would he be someone you'd like at Everton? Because I think, I think I've always liked the look of Deli Ali. For me, he's like got that little bit of Tim Cale in him, mm. um, kind of player. But soon as soon as I seen the documentary, the Spurs documentary, and the way Mourinho literally sussed them out on day one, and what's happened, it's been dead interesting the way we watched that, and then since that, he's just been bombed. Yeah. yeah. Um, is he someone you you would like to see at Everton, or you know, like the look of? He's a good player. There's no question about it. And his his big plus point is is the goals he brings from midfield and and what he's done for Spurs. Good, fifty odd goals I think for Spurs from midfield. So. He is a, he's a good player, there's no doubt in his, his value, there's no doubt in his ability is there, but like you, it's the documentary, give you a different side to him, a little bit of an insight yeah. into him. And, I, and listen, he might have been, you can edit things to, to make people look one way or the other, but the fact that oh. Marino has, has now, like you say, bombed him out to the, to the situation where a couple of years ago, it would or even 18 months ago, it would have almost been unthinkable that Spurs would be getting rid of him because it was always Kane and Ali wasn't yeah, it yeah. they were like the main it's two Son and Son was like Son the, and Kane the now isn't now it now it's just them two and Ali's not even comes on he gets dragged off he's kicking you know he's reacting yeah. Marino's having a go at him leaving him out so there's obviously all that going on I don't think the um, the other videos of him do any favours either no he's yeah we've seen a bit more of him than we probably wanted well, to well you him. know but um, he's a good age he's only 24 still so he's got a lot of his if he could Knuckle down. It's a pivotal point in his career. It is though, now. Isn't it? it is because this was a a club that he seemed ingrained in. He's doing really well, and like I said, we had that relationship. Mm. Play for England. He's there with Kane, and then all of a sudden, he's out in the cold. And there was rumours of him leaving in the or you know in the summer transfer window, and even right up to the last couple of days, mm. and he didn't go. Um, and then the Everton links come at the early December, didn't he? I know, Mister. Here we go. As he uh, come out and said. The information he's got is that Everton aren't interested in Ali. So I just think it's more, it's more a case of his agents probably testing the water with different clubs. I'm mm. sure he spoke to Everton, and Everton might look at him and go, "He's a good player and he's got a lot of at good attributes." But I, like you just said, is he someone we need? I think for someone like him, I think you have to pl already play that kind of system. I almost feel like you have to build your attack around them. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, the way we play with three in midfield, when we do play with three in midfield, he could play there. He'd have to play a little bit higher up. I think that I think when you've got Hamas Rodriguez playing regular, the the need for the creative spark to come from that third midfielder isn't necessarily there as much. Mm. So I think I think he could play for us, but I, I just don't don't see it. I don't no. see or spending the kind of money that would be needed on a on 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 a player like Deli Ali. Um would a loan suit us may maybe, but um Daniel Levy doesn't want to be loaning players to, no. to rivals. No, exactly. He wouldn't, he wouldn't loan us Gazaniga mm. in the summer exactly. because Mourinho said we were rivals for Europe. Yeah. So So I, I I yeah, it's not yeah. gonna happen, is no, it? Not gonna happen. So. Um another name being mentioned with a lot recently is Sammy Kadira, who, who is the new Isco, uh, yeah. a player who's a player desperately in need of a, of a move, 
and has already played for Carlo Ancelotti. And is chalking it up at yeah. every opportunity yeah. in manager agent. Yeah. Um, and that to me seems all it is. Mm. It's him more than anybody else saying, oh, I'd love to try the Premier League. It's the only place I haven't played. He's played in Italy, he's played in Spain, he's played in Germany, he wants to play in the Premier League. Carlo Ancelotti, I loved him. It was the best time I had working with him. He's at Everton. Mm. I seen Hammers go from Real to, to you know, there he's seen Na Alan go from Napoli to Everton. So Ancelotti called on, on a couple of his ex players and he probably thinks, you know, I'll have a little bit of that as well. But mm. this is not one I'd like to see happen. You know, five years ago, yeah, maybe. But yeah. he's 34. He's had a lot of injuries. He's had a heart operation, which which is he's, he's medically he's fine and all that, no problem. But he's not kicked the ball for Juve this season, you know. And that in that in itself means that even if he's at peak fitness for a thirty-four year old, he's got to come in and train to get up to the level of a Premier League. How long is it going to take him to get Premier League ready? And what if he breaks down? And then if he breaks down and the money's on, he's on one hundred and eighty grand after tax at the moment or something. People are talking about one hundred and. 20 grand a week. To me, this one is a non starter and should or should be, in my opinion. Obviously, if Carlo Ancelotti decided he wanted them and Everton wanted them, you back them, of course you do. But just looking at it from the outside of not being involved in that, it's not one that I'd like. And also, I, I, you see, they get people going on about, you know, better than what we've got and all this. And is he though? Is he though? He's 34. He's got a terrible injury record. And he, you know, he is a player that, or certainly the kind of player that we're desperately trying to get rid of at this club. You know, we're desperate to try and get rid of players. You know, we will talk about more, but someone like Shane Tosin, you know, players like that. Fabi We've Galassi. got Fabian Delph. Delph. Delph's cost us 600 players grand a game so far. Desperate to get rid of. And he'd just be another one. Mm. He would just be another one. And I know he's got this big name attached to him, but what does that actually mean? You know, you bring in some of the cameras for Zegers because you're trying to you're trying to get the last bit out of him, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Really, mm -hmm. the last trying to get the last little bit of him, and obviously, but things come with and that. And he's a match winner, though. And things come with that as well. He's a match winner, and also commercially, he's very important, and and you've got to add those things on. And the deal as a whole will works because of that, and because he is that match winner, you can accept. You know, you can accept Certain those things, flaws yeah. in his game or his fitness or whatever. Mm -hmm. Someone like Kadir, I just don't see the upside in it whatsoever. I don't see where where the upside is on buying a player like that when or getting a player like that. It just to me, you're right what you said before, it is just smoke signals coming from the player and his agent. Because I probably think they look at Everton like they've got loads of money and they've they're in the Premier League and they want to break through. Um, and they want to join the top six, and because 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 if they didn't, they wouldn't have gone and got Carlo Ancelotti. Mm. And I think and your experience will help them. Yeah, and, and what they're not seeing is that we've already done that side of it, not going out and bringing in players like that. But we've already gone out and splashed money on players that you know didn't suit us, didn't suit us or were past the best, and we paid a lot of money and we put them on big wages. And it's not the way we want to do things. It's why we've got it's why we've got Marcel Brands to try and keep us. Whether you, you know, whether you like Marcel Brands or you don't like him, whatever, Marcel Brands' job is to keep us away from those kind mm. of players. You know, steer, steer, steer the the you know whether it be uh, Machiri or or whoever's in charge away from those kind of players, and you know be the sensible head in the room. And that's not always a nice position to be at a football club for anyone because the fa fans demand and sometimes the owners demand. You know, and so he's so, got QPR a few years ago written all over it, hasn't it? This kind of move. No, it was though, wasn't it? The Jagalenkos when he was Jagalacticos when he was just getting players who were coming to the end, but the names were hoping to elevate them. It's not. We don't really want to follow that. We, we've wasted enough money on players that haven't been right for us. And you know, West Ham, someone like that, you'd expect. But even, but even then, they're trying it. to turn away from it. But they would have in the past. But that's mm. the thing, isn't it? And we can't do that. We just can't do it. Yeah. The next one. Um, is this one's interesting because this one's like right on the edge. This man here, Christian Eriksen, mm. he's sort of, he's sort of on the edge of this whole thing, isn't he? He's had in some Milan. He's been there for a year. Mm. It's not really worked. I don't know why they ever bought him because he doesn't actually shoot the way they play. They mm. want to play 
they've got players like you know Lukaku and they want to Martinez. They want to play with a bit of pace, and I think Christian Eriksen just slows it down a little bit. But he's twenty nine, isn't he? Twenty nine next month. Sorry, twenty nine next month. Yeah. So just turning twenty nine. Yeah. Um, so he's twenty eight. <laughs> he he he's an interesting one because it probably would only be a loan. Mm, that's what they're saying. Um, played in the Premier League. I thought he was a great player. He is the player that Gilfie Sigurdsson wants to be. In fact, Gilfie Sigurdsson was the prototype for Christian Eriksen at Spurs. Mm-hmm. Um, he's an interesting one because we do play with that like we've mentioned before we do play with that role but I just wonder whether again it would be worth it because having Hamas Rodriguez as your creator spark and him coming in I know you can't you can't have enough good players I understand that but again I, I think he on paper he could play for a lot of teams and do a really, really good job. I do think I think he's a great player, I really do. And you know that that I wouldn't say last season, but certainly this season before at Spurs, he was he was brilliant. And the kind of goals he scored, you you know you looked at him thinking, certainly with looking at Gilfie Sigurds and you, you although Gilf, Gilfie Sigurds has scored a lot of goals that season, well, but um, I do like him. I just I'm not I'm 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 not sure whether if he was offered to Everton, he would be the right fit. Oh, he's a good player. There's no question about it. He's ability wise fantastic. Like you say, you know, twenty nine next month. Um, he's gone to. I think he's played twenty six games or something for Inter and mm. scored one goal. So hasn't had his most creative time. He's got no goals, no assists so far this season, and I think he's played thirteen games this season so far. So he's not having a great season, which is why they're looking at, and he's looking to go and get some football. A loan wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. It's if he could do a loan swap and give Gilfie to Inter, who I think he'd do. I think he'd be great in it. Do you he... behave yourself? <laughs> I think he'd do well in Italy. Sigurdsson would do. He's, he's got the. I think it's a slower league, so I think he's better. But I just think for him, it seemed to me more of a club signing than Conti signing. Do you know what I mean? They they wanted them before, hadn't they, and couldn't get him. I think he wanted them before Conte had come even into because he was even in that documentary he's talking about like he wanted to try something new and they'd been into him for a while and he, he tried to get him in the summer didn't he and it didn't work and he eventually mm. got him in the uh, in the January but it's not really worked for him there but I, like you he is a, he's a gone as day he's a cracking player and you'd look at him and go well, he would improve us because he's he, he is better than what we've got yeah. but he's got a lot of creativity a lot of creativity yeah. in him and he's good from dead balls as well. But <clears throat> it's where you... F- I don't know whether we're at, but we are. We are at the stage where it's what the team needs. That's the only way we're yeah. going to get better. It's it's great collecting players, mm. and a lot of teams do it. But if you don't know what you're doing with them, then yeah, that, yeah. at some stage, you do have to be the grown-up. In the, you know, and that's yeah. what you're it's, saying it's about big, Brands. He's a big, ne- he's a, he's a big name, good player. I think he's far too similar to Gilfie. I think he's better than Gilfie. I, I, I give, you, but I just think they're far too similar. And if you've got, especially if you've got Hammers as well, yeah, yeah, it's just having. You want, yeah. We're looking at I, again those first three players. I think in different ways. They're they're all sort of not similar versions of each other because they're all different kind of players. I appreciate that, but they don't really fit. The three three of them don't really fit with. Kadira, 10 years ago. Yeah, but that's 10 years ago. I'm talking about the whole 24, thing right now. 24, The next three players we're going to talk about, I think, definitely Ethan. fit into more what, what, we're looking at. what we're looking at and we're in the direction we're going to go. Um, let's start with... Um, what's his name? Moises Casido. Mo- Moises Casido. Yeah. Plays for Independiente de Valle in... Ecuador. Ecuador. He's in the Ecuador national team. He's just got in, he's had four caps and scored one goal. But he's a he's a box to box midfield player and uh, Tim Vickery's been speaking about, hype him about him isn't this it? week. He's only nineteen, so great age. Uh, Tim Vickery said he's he's liking goal Kante, but he's actually better going forward as well. So he's got that about him. Mm-hmm. He's uh, loads of energy in midfield, which mm-hmm. is something that we want. Definitely. I think he's I think he's about five eleven, something like that. So five ten. So he's not huge, but he's not tiny. And he can get around the pitch, he's really good mm. and can join in in the final third as well as play 
in a defensive role as well. So more of what I know when we talk, that's the kind of play that we want mm. in Everton's midfield. Someone who we let's be honest, since Garner went, we haven't had that energy in midfield. We've got Alan yeah. now who tries to force it and is a good footballer. And we've got obviously the core you can get around the pitch. And we've seen how much of a difference they've mm. made to this team this year. Whereas last season we were shocking, weren't we, in midfield? We were so slow, it was yeah. incredible. John Philippe Gabbanon was brought in to do that, and we know what's you know, he's had no luck at all. But someone like this kid, I think it's a really interesting one. He's been linked heavily with Manchester yeah, United yeah, and Arsenal, yeah, yeah. as well as a couple of other teams. I know there's a couple of MLS clubs that are trying to grab him as well because that's the route they're going nowadays. So this one would be interesting. Whether it's realistic, I don't know. But we know Marcel Brands likes the South American He has market. been looking at South America. And also with the, with the rules surrounding the EU and work permits changing, mm. um, I mean... I don't know what how what I don't know what I mean I can't even send a package back to Germany. That's how complicated it's got. But if it is gonna cause problems, then they will look at South America and mm. maybe now I know we've had this idea of this is gonna be interesting, be interesting how the way payment situation changes. Because I think there was this idea of it was really hard to bring in young players from South America, but it because and it might have been because we were bringing so many in from the e, EU where easy. they were yeah. easy and they were allowed to come. But now maybe it's that the system is universal. Mm. Everyone will get a fair crack at the whip. Maybe so maybe the South Americans will 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 be easier to get mm. them into the country. Um, and he's had four recent caps for Ecuador, so yeah. if they're looking now. This is a lad that's played for the junior side yeah. and done he's in the national team or that he's only 19. So if, I mean, if you play for Watford, you get one dead easy. Get one. If Watford uh, go for him, yeah. Yeah, we, maybe we could just go go to Watford and, and let them get him. But, um, no, that, but that's an interesting one, isn't it? Because like you say, Brands is looking at South America. He likes the market. It's a cheaper market. Uh, it's tough. We know the appetite of South American players mm. can be you know a lot more um, immense than maybe some... Lads from over here who they don't through. have it as easy, do they? No, lads in this country in the academy system, they just have it easy. Mm. There's no other way. They, and they, they have don't. It easy. They have to and they everything. don't. They have to scrap for everything. Can so, yeah. This lad, I've seen what I what I did notice when I was I was actually looking for um, pictures of him from for like putting thumbnails and stuff. Is like how many Man United sites have, have you know yeah. gone on with it? You know, mm. uh, you know. So they obviously. They're obviously definitely looking in that direction. So mm. I do get the feeling that someone's going to snap this kid up. Mm. Now, whether it's us or not, I don't know. But um, if Man United are looking in that direction and other teams are looking in that direction, he can't be a bad player. So I think the mobility of him is is, it, um, is one that I think is really interesting mm. because I think that's what that's when we're talking about what the team needs. Now, you might say to someone who's not really doesn't watch much football other than Everton, Sammy Kadera or Moises Casido, and they'll go Kadera most times. People go Kadera because I've heard of him, or Kadera yeah, yeah. because he's won everything, which FIFA. he has. Well, he's won everything, though, yeah, as yeah. well. Even if you forget FIFA plays, he's won everything. Won the World Cup, Champions League, loads of leagues, wherever he's been. But this kid has got bundles of energy and ability, and if you put that into him, one's the field, future and one's the past. Exactly, and that's what I was saying that's about what fits Everton yeah. better. So I think he'd be a really interesting signing. Interesting. Uh, moving on, um, another one that we've been linked with is Selleck. Mehmet Selleck, yeah, not at Lille. Not Tom. From Lille, uh, right back. Right back, yeah. Been linked heavily with a move to By, uh, Milan. Milan, yeah. They've got that lot, haven't they? He's, he's done really well this year. But Lille seems to be a a really good breeding ground yeah. of, of late, isn't it? They're, mm. they're doing the sort of, again, the money ball way, getting a player in young, give them mm. a couple of years, and then toughen them up and then send them so send them out like we've seen with Gabriel. But uh, we, I think we were linked to them in the summer, weren't we? Yeah. When we were having a little look. And yeah. It just came up in the last few days, actually, because I think it was um, uh, on face, on Twitter, sorry, wasn't it? It was uh, Romano. Well, what's happened with Francis, the, the TV they lost the big yeah. TV deal. Yeah, we'll so sport, yeah. A lot of a lot of the clubs are having to look around and think, how can we get players out? How can we make money? So they probably wouldn't have been looking to sell sell it this summer, mm. it, this January transfer yeah. window. Probably wait for the summer to do it. But 
the looking now and thinking, well, if we can get the promise of 20, 25 million quid in for them, then that'll help us pay this or that. And they do, they do have a brilliant um, turnover of players. They obviously, you know, Nicholas Pepe to Arsenal has been yeah. a bit hit and miss, but they got 70 odd million for him. Gabriel to Arsenal this mm. summer for 25 million. You know, if they could sell Selic for 20, 25 million, you know, it's a big bit of money coming in. And they do, they've had, obviously, Thingy went out as well. Osmane went mm. out to Napoli for 50 odd. They've got um, Kone, the winger, who's another one who's mm. attracting interest. So they, they're making a lot of money doing it. They do it brilliantly. They really do. They, money ball, like you said, it's mm. fantastic how they turn it over. It's all data, taking chances. Mm. France is a great breeding ground. So, you know, Celtic is a Turkish international as well. So 23, great age. And he's going to go. He's going to move. He's going to no, move. No it just depends it. where, you know, whether we're... Bayern the... Munich have looked at him as well. He's a, he's a kid who can get up and down. He's good on the ball. Mm. It's not amazing, but he's, he is, he's definitely um, good enough to come in he's, and he wouldn't be a stopgap. He's not a stopgap right back. So I think he'd come in and it'd be, I think it'd be very much like the Luca Dean, Leighton Baines situation. I think if Everton bought him, he would very quickly move past Seamus and establish mm. himself as our number one right back. But he's an interesting alternative to someone we yeah. haven't got on the board, which was Max Ahrens who's been linked. Yeah, but yeah. he's obviously a lot more experienced, couple, three years older than Ahrens, but loads of experience as well. So. And the uh, final one is uh, Leon Bailey, obviously by Leverkusen. Mm. Um, Winger, forward. Yeah. Got Play linked, left obviously linked with him in the summer. There's talk that he was uh, shopping himself around in the mm. you know in the Premier League. He's just changed his agent as well to a British-based agent, I think, he as has, well, to try has, and get a yeah. move over here. And of of late, he's looked he's looked uh, really good for Leverkusen. They obviously got into the um, they've been in the latter stages of the Champions League, aren't they? So he, he's won. I think we'd have to move quickly for. I really do because I just think that if we leave it till the summer, I think there'll be a few knocking on the door for this lad because he's exactly what teams are looking for: pacey, play on either flank, play up front, mm. um, hard working, technically good, can score goals. You know, it's what everyone wants. It's what everyone wants now, and and you're, he's young as well. Younger, twenty two, isn't he? So, I think with Bailey, twenty three years of age, he's got nine goals in nineteen games for Leverkusen. Europa League, it's not Champions League, yeah, yeah. but he's got five goals in six games in the Europa League. Yeah. He's, you know, he's been fantastic form this season. Everton were linked with him very strongly in the summer. Looked at him, watched him against Rangers in the Europa League. Um, he he asked Ad Ward, who's a football agent, in the summer to try to get him a move over here to Everton or Spurs, it, they went with Bale and we obviously had Hammers, so it didn't really happen, but Everton have maintained an interest in him, particularly because of the versatility. Mm. Like you say, he can play right, he can play left, he played left wing back for Leverkusen at some stage last season as well. He's a Jamaica international, loads of pace, scores goals, versatile, and 23 years of age is an absolutely perfect mm. kind of um, profile that Everton wants. And I think the thing, I think you mentioned it early on in the show, is that if you got someone like him, it means that the Charleston could go up front then. Yeah. You know, you could move the Charleston round a little bit and, mm -hmm. and have that cover. Or if the Charleston was missing for a couple of, you know, yeah. we've had him suspended and he's been injured this season. Concussed, you know, I think he's missed about seven games this season. Whereas if you'd have had Bailey, there wouldn't have been any, people wouldn't have been going, we've got no the Charleston. It'd just be like, well, Bailey's playing there. Mm -hmm. And it's that kind of comfort and think if yeah. Charleston's fit what, it? and Hammers is out it's well Bailey's playing yeah. there or play it's come someone's go off your bench you know what I mean that's that's one thing we're missing massively I'm not saying he will be a bench player but suddenly gives you options in options in the front three well it means you don't every week you, when you're picking the starting 11 it's, you know that you get to the front three and you go well them three are fit they're mm -hmm. playing where it'd be I don't know yeah. who, who misses out this week that's any top club or any club trying to get better and better has those decisions yeah. where it's like, and the thing with him is, buying someone like him is very different to buying someone like, say, Moise Keane, mm. who we own, obviously, but with Moise Keane, it's hard to play. You, you play instead of Dom, or you don't play. Yeah. But someone like Leon Bailey is, you've got you've got a three or four yeah. positions, so he's a, he's an excellent player. He's potential. Yeah. He's not amazing. He's potential, and he's really quick. 
He's got the potential to be amazing. The thing Which with him is, is what we've got to be looking at, exactly. Isn't it? And he can go in other because he yeah. can go in other positions. It makes the sell to him mm. easier as yeah. well. Whereas with Moyes Keane, like I just said, it's you either displace and, Dom or yeah. you don't play. And this is the time to get them now. This is definitely the time to go looking. Well, for I think players. if we don't, I think in the summer, if we don't get him in January in the summer, it'll be really difficult yeah. because I think other teams will look at him and yeah. go, "I'd have a bit of that." So let's have a look at some of the potential outs mm. um, that we're hoping to tick off week by week. Uh, Sheng Tosin, who has been linked with uh, Palace, West Brom, um, Schalke, Hertha Berlin, yeah. and Bashi, obviously a return to Besiktas yeah, as was, well. I think he was even linked with PSV, wasn't he? Or Feyenoord, I think, as well. So, obviously, he's sitting on the bench. He's not doing anything. He's not doing anything when he comes on. Um, he's doing his hair for nothing a lot of the time. And uh, you know, Just for him, you know, again, Euro's coming up. You, we've got to get him off the. We've got to get him off the wage bill. Haven't we? We've got to get him out the club for everyone. It would be, you know, be whatever, whatever. He's been here for three seasons. Yeah. He's played fifty. He's scored less five less games. goals than Nias. Yeah, he's got. Yeah, he has. He's got ten goals, hasn't he? In that time, paid a lot of money for him. It hasn't worked. I think Shank Tosin, for himself to be at his very best, probably has to play every. He's yeah. that type of when you watch him. He's that type mm -hmm. of player that he probably needs to play every week. And if he does, you probably get goals out of him. He's, he's again, he's in that position. He's not displacing Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Dominic Calvert-Lewin is a modern day, mm -hmm. quick, strong centre forward, great in the air. Tosin is someone for me who needs to play in a yeah. two or has to play every single week yeah. with crosses coming in. So for himself and for us, it would be better if he moved on. And he's been here three years yeah. and he's, he's not, it's not working. We, well, we sent him out last January. Yeah. It was only for a knee injury he'd be a Crystal Palace player now. So that's one that yeah, has to look. happen. Well, it's for him as well. He wants yeah. to be playing, doesn't he? So um, Yannick Balassi, obviously, he's out of contact in the summer. Mm -hmm. Nearly moved to Middlesbrough on the final day of the transfer window. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised that hasn't happened yet. I thought he'd go straight to Middlesbrough. I thought, but I don't know whether he's having second thoughts and thinking, well, if I hang around for another six months, I can move on a free and I can get bigger wages. I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but... You 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 think he wants to play football? From all the talk from him, he wants to play football. So go and play football. Yeah, I'm surprised that hasn't happened because Warnock has has been quite open in his um, mm. overtures to Yannick. He said we want him in, we want him in, and you know we're what we're we're almost a week into the window now. It's not happened, so it's been mm. interesting. Unless there's a couple of other clubs sniffing around yeah, them, yeah. I don't know. But for him, you know he's a nice fella and all that. Yeah. You want him to play football and. But again, maybe, like I said, maybe he's got another couple of other clubs mm -hmm. looking at him and he's maybe thinking about his family and this is an important move for him. But who knows, like you say, he's had a contract in just over five months. So mm. we'll just have to wait and see. Um, another player in that situation is Mohamed Bessic. But yeah. there's been nothing. There was Not rumours really. in the summer with linking him with Rangers. Mm -hmm. um, but nothing came of that. And I wonder if Everton will... Sandro Ramirez and just pay him off and just pay if, him if he's not done it. just for both to get him off the way for but him. at the end of the day if it comes to the end of January and he hasn't moved then he's not moving so you might as well just pay him off and what you were going to pay him anyway and get rid of him so mm. um, Jonas Lersel there's been rumours of him moving to into, my, into Miami he's mm. another one who's had a contact at the end of the summer um, he's you know again the Euros you want to be involved in the Euros you want to play he's clearly not He's not. He's not Everton's number two. No. He's, you know. So, if he's, there's an opportunity, I know there's a lot going on it into Miami. Possibility of Phil Neville taking over, mm. and, you know, whatever. I don't know, but uh, they've sacked their manager. So that'd be good. That'd be good if that could be done. Their season doesn't start till March. March yeah. So they're already in talks yeah. with them. Apparently, according to MLS um, official nice MLS, good. I've said Everton are mm. in talks with them over it. So. He's not played. A, he signed, you know, eighteen months ago. He's not played a game for Everton, so he's never gonna. No. He's never gonna get in. Uh, finally, Bernard. A lot of rumours of him with going to Roma, mm -hmm. and obviously there's a lot of talk we're going to make Robin Olsen's deal permanent. So, yeah. you know, he's not had too much of a look in. He's got. A, he's had, you know, a couple of performances over Christmas off the bench, starting, but you know, he's not the manager's go-to. And if we could bring in a Leon Bailey, then you know, his time would be up at the club. Let's be honest. His, his size just doesn't fit the Premier League. No, he's, a, he's a lovely little footballer. Yeah, yeah, of course but he is. It's the Premier League's power and pace, yeah. and it, like 
the direct comparison with Bailey is that's mm. what you're getting. Yeah. You know, and if, if the irony is if Everton could shift Bernard and Tolson out and bring Bailey and you'd get one player for two positions yeah. because it, it's free up and that. Way, but, and less wages probably. But I think Bernard... Not less wages. It, yeah. His agent's come out, hasn't he, and said he expects it to go through this month. So I think Everton yeah. won't stand in his way. And, and and so hopefully if we, could, if we could get a couple of them out and we could and uh, Moise Keane's deal was made permanent to Paris Saint-Germain, then maybe we would go in for the Leon Bailey. I, you know, I think fans would expect something because they'd be a little bit worried if we were shipping a couple out. Well, if, if it was Bernard and Tosin, mm -hmm. I don't think Balassi, Bezzett yeah, and, and Lesel, they're, they're, the squad. they're just not on the squad, really. But, but if, if Bernard and Tosin went off, it's two off the bench, off so the Everton bench. Would, have to do, yeah, yeah. would have to do some deals, wouldn't he? I yeah. don't know. It might be one and, and promote someone, mm. which is fine. You know, Maybe that's an Onyango or a Ellis Sims mm. or something. Who knows till the end of the season. But I'd expect something to come in if they went off. It's going to be interesting. Uh, make sure you stick with us over the next month. We'll be covering this all the way through January. And obviously in our Everton News Dailies every day, we'll be talking about all the latest rumours and rounding it up in this show. Uh, during the week so uh, yeah give us your thoughts in the comments make sure to give this video a like it really helps the channel subscribe if you haven't already and if you want more great videos daily live videos join us on Patreon the link is there see you later